And there, in fact, was the frying pan that Wendy was just talking about, you see. But it's seamless. Now, I'm here in Roy's port cabin in the chair that Roy was having problems in last night trying to flog those dodgy motors. Roy, you should never have got involved in Phil Mitchell. Neither should you, Lisa. Anyway, it's anti-Phil Mitchell day today. Right, and I've been looking through, um, through uh, Roy's logbooks. Look, I found a book here, and inside it says Juliet Bravo, episodes five and seven. <laughs> so, so that's come from Juliet Bravo through to EastEnders. Seamless again. You wouldn't have known that about it, Shane. You see little secrets here. And I'm delighted to say that the frighteningly talented Paul J. Medford, who's all singing, all dancing, TV presenting actor, and Deepak, who's the, the actor and the writer now, who was Sanjay and you were Kelvin. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, you actually, you, you, we've got all sorts of people coming back this week. Uh -huh. And Paul, for you, you haven't been back for 13 and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's very strange. It's very strange, especially because we didn't do it in this studio. I think we were next door. Yeah. But the whole Elstree experience was on, our, on the way in the car. I was thinking, gosh, I haven't driven this journey since then. Was it quite emotional? Well, it was grey and it was wet and it was raining, so it was just like I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at you in action. as Kelvin. All right. Right, then. Right, then. But you sure don't want me oh, to No, no, no. No, I prefer to say, um... I hate saying goodbyes. Right then. Tony, we'd better be going. Yeah, just coming. Look, um, this is for Vicky. Tell Michelle I didn't have time to wrap it, huh? Oh, right, I'm sure she'll understand, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Take care of yourself, huh? Yeah, you too. I might be thinking of you. Look, you just have a good time, eh? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you don't look any different. I know! It's good, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Fond memories? Yeah. Yeah, I had, I, you know, I was 16, 17, and I had the best time ever with Letitia and Susan and, and Adam. Yeah, we had a great time. But why did you leave then if you have such a good time? I left because there w at that point, I don't know if it's different now, there was no time to do anything else. And I knew I wanted to sing and I knew I wanted to, to dance because that's where I'd grown up. And I just thought, oh, like, of course, I didn't know any better at 17. I didn't know you didn't walk yeah. out on a, on a major series. <laughs> uh, so I left to kind of do that and do musical theatre and, and have fun because that really is a lot of fun doing Because you work very hard. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah, hard. Yeah. Now, how about you as Sanjay? And it is, I did that awful thing this morning when I saw Deepak arrive. I, had to start, I was about to come up and say, hello, Sanjay. I'm so sorry, because you only left a year ago. Yeah. Am I, I right? I don't feel like I've left at all, actually. I feel like I belong here. I don't, it's like this morning. I mean, it's the first time I've been here since, since I've left. And it was, again, you were saying, it's a weird, that journey, that drive up to the <laughs> gates and stuff. It's, I don't Thank know, my heart was, yeah. Let's just have a look at you as Sanjay, if we may. Now that is a fine woman. Spoken for. What? Now what was she looking what, at? What, you and her? Present or future tense? Present. No, how much? It's a snip of 50. <laughs> the only one I got. Well, you've got a nice spot here, Sanjay. You must be bursting with gratitude. <laughs> Go and take it. Take it? You'd have the shirt off a bloke's back, you would. Yeah, and you'd sell it right back to her. Now, you're going to give me a decent bag of all? Yeah. Which shop do you want it to have come from? <laughs> oh, OK, you don't look any different. I can say that to you because it was only a year ago. But how long were you actually on EastEnders for? Five and a half years. You weren't? Yeah. Was it that long? It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, people think I've been there like 10, 12 years. I mean, that's what happens. I don't know. You just seep into the public consciousness. It's absolutely amazing. Is it, is it now? Uh, do you still watch it? Is it strange not I to actually, be a part of it? I actually... No, I don't. I don't know. I just kind of... Um, I don't know. I just, it just, I just don't keep in touch with it. For some, you know, you know what it's like. And um, and also, whenever I do look at it, it's like it's, it's very, a lot of new faces. Mm. But looking at that, uh, Ian Reddington, I think he's a fantastic. Tricky Dicky. He's just such a fantastic actor. He's a very good friend of mine, and he's one person that I have kind of kept in touch with oh, since I nice. left, and because he left about four years ago. I have to say, the dodgiest dresses on your stall, though. <laughs> God, <laughs> we've um, we've got a, a email here from you from Adam Curtis. Says he saw you in an episode of Taggart. Oh. What have you been doing as well, please? Um, well, yeah, Taggart. He says actually you were, you were great. I forgot to leave. Taggart it. was the first thing I did after I left drama school, mm. and it was great working with Mark McManus, who's like a real rough. He's not, no longer with us, unfortunately. Um, it was a great experience filming in the Gorbals. Uh, and the first scene I had, I remember, I thought the director would take me by the hand and say, "Look, this is what you have to do," but it was. Um, Gordon Fleming, who again is, is passed on, and uh, the first scene I had was this guy hanging upside down on the top of this derelict building, and I'm kind of got this uh, flame to his face. Oh, 
Oh, charming, lovely. Um, and that was my first scene ever in the business. Welcome, welcome to the business. Now, you are, I mean, I really am a huge fan, as you know, and I've seen your work. I've been to see The Lion King many, many times, and we're going to show this because it is a fantastic show, and you are the main hyena. Let's just have a look at The Lion King. Okay, you were in there. You are the main hyena. Yes, the scene, I think. Well, the thing is, we're a bit frightening, so Disney don't like to show us to the public. You are a bit. Yeah. I have say I took my godson and yeah. oh, when you first came out. But you yeah. really are. I mean, you do, you, you've written your own show as well. Yeah, that's called Inner City Jam. Opens at the West Yorkshire Playhouse, 1st of April. Plug, plug, oh, plug. I <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Um, you've got, so you've been in Hair, you've yeah. been in other musicals, yeah. you've released songs. Yeah. You, are you ever going to stop? Are you, is there anything you can't do? No. But I want to do some television again. That's Acting true. Yeah, or I'm presenting. Well, no, not pre I can't presenter. present. You, you're fantastic at that. I just get too nervous, especially with the live situation. I tried it. Do you remember that thing, someone in your ear saying, Yeah, on Saturday morning. You used Phil, to do Saturday Phil. morning telly before. Yeah, yeah, with you. And I was like, yeah, I like this, but I don't think I'm really good at it, so I should let someone else do it. So you want to do acting again? Uh, yeah, I like to. I want to do some television again. I want to be able would you, to... What about coming back to EastEnders? Would that be strange, or would you not? I couldn't come back as the same character. I, if I could do the sort of American thing, I could be somebody else. I'd okay, like do that. your audition now. Say something in American and see if they... Oh, God. No, I don't want to be American. You just, just said American to, thing. No, I want to be another character. Like, in America, they bring another character in play. Oh, I see. I thought know. you wanted to be an American. No, no, I want to be <laughs> another actor <laughs> playing another part altogether. Oh, I see. Um, because I'm... Well, I couldn't play Kelvin again because I've done so many weird things since then it'd be mm. strange to kind of play a very normal person so if I could come in and be an axe murderer or something then I'd be very happy watch to come this back. space both yeah. of you thank you very much you're also going to be taking part in the phone in okay. please give us a call 0990 107 if you'd like to speak to any of the cast members but this is what else is to come this morning at 11 20 shopping for the stars oh what shall I wear 11 30 East End passion lots of kissing there at 11.40, 20 to 12, postcards from EastEnders, your chance to enter the competition, and we're going to be hearing from Lottie, Tom Watt. And 11.50, your chance to talk to the stars. The stars of EastEnders will talk to you. Hello there, welcome back. Well, I'm stood next to a familiar face whose name you probably won't remember. It's Glenn Cooper, the postie. It's Jim. Jim, how long have you been posting, Hello, Jim? Jeremy. I actually have a delivery for you, by oh, the way. Oh, Bill, thanks very much. All right. So, tell me, how long have you been doing this? I guess this will be my eighth year uh, with the show, totally. And um, I've done sort of on and off before that when it first started, etc. So do you ever yearn for a role other than the extra? Well, I think one's always hopeful, aren't they? You know, it's, uh, you just do your bit and hope that the, the gods that be can see that you're capable of other things. Well, let's, let's just give the viewers at home a quick reminder of what Jim looks like on the square. Hi, mate! Hi! All right. All right. Number 43? Yeah. Yeah, you've got a post. Yeah. Well, did we have any? You had some. So where is it? I gave it to your wife. She's just leaving. What, she took it with her? I don't know. I just delivered it. I don't normally help people open it. Well, was there a letter from the Allied of York? I don't look. You have to be discreet to do we'll this We'll try and remember. Oh, sorry. So, Glenn, tell me, have you ever had an embarrassing moment? I have, very similar to that clip we've just seen, actually, uh, coming out of the gates with the letters. Trip, fall, everything goes all over the place, in the air. Everybody p fetching letters out of the air for the rest of the morning. It was quite oh, funny. Oh, Lord, One Lord. of those things that happens. Well, I'll leave you to carry on delivering the Indeed. post. Thank you so much for that, Glenn, mate. Thank you. Back to me, old mate, Gabby. Will you? Oh, here we are in the makeup room. We're just having a whole, whole conversation here. We've got uh, Claire from makeup, and we've got lovely Charlie. You are a naughty girl. Uh, I know. She is. <laughs> oh, Janine is what a great character, though. Yeah, I love her. How um, long have you been Janine for? Because there have been two other Janines, haven't there? Yeah, there were two previous to me. I, I've been here. It's coming on a year now. Oh, it's no. gone so quickly. I can't believe that. A year in May. Oh my word, I can't believe mm. I've had to suffer you for a year already. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk to both of you at the same time. Makeup wise, how do you think to yourself, right, I'm going to make Janine? How does that work in the beginning? Well, Janine, we've kept Janine quite low key because she is actually still at school. As much as uh, Charlie would probably like to have a lot more makeup, I think that, will, that will happen. Mm. We've made her be very basic just for this year at least. Mm. But certainly when she leaves school, I think all sorts of things might start. Yeah, how old, are you, how old is Janine meant to be? 16. Janine's 16. 16. How yeah. old are you in real I'm life? I'm 18. You're 18, right. Yeah, because I got it on my 18th birthday. I got the part. Oh, my word. Yeah. How, did it, was it on the phone? Yeah. What did yeah. they say? Well, my agent, we was waiting. We went shopping, and I knew I had had the second casting two days before. And I knew like, it would be in the next couple of days. And so me and my mum went shopping for our outfits for my 18th birthday. Mm. And we just waited for the phone to ring. And we had 
my Chris, we, my agent, we went up to uh, my agency and he said, you got it, we just got really drunk <laughs> on the shop bag. It's lucky it was your 18th birthday. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, yes, fantastic. we don't do any drinking here, we don't allow that here. No, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> you're not made it. Now, how long does everybody get? Because like, is it true that everyone has their allotted time? Everybody has their allotted time. Um, the longest call is half an hour. Um, Can I ask who, who right, would be? Barbara. Right. Barbara Winter. Um, and June Brown. Oh, right, lovely. Dot Cotton. Dot Cotton. So Peggy They're Mitchell. The two who have half an hour. Everyone else, all the girls, 20 minutes. Can we just let into everybody into a bit of a secret? Sorry, I'm going to be cheeky. We've got Terry Raymond here, okay, so that's how you know. And look what's in his makeup bag. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. He's a, he's a full 15 minute makeup, Gavin. <laughs> a toothbrush. A toothbrush. Is that for his teeth? I don't he... think he's even ever used. He oh, lovely. <laughs> just so that he didn't feel left out. He does have a makeup bag oh, with him. nothing in it. Now, but also, now what I'm intrigued by is, so we've learnt this week that you can be filming outside, inside, on different days, whatever. How on earth do you keep track of the hair was like this, or the eyes are like a watered, or whatever? Well, you have to have photographic memory. That helps. Polaroids help. Making notes. Just generally following your schedule and your story order and just making sure that you remember if it was windy or if it was wet or... You know, it's quite hard when they come inside if you film interiors a week later mm. that you have to remember, well, actually, it was blowing a gale or there was, you know... I don't know how they do I it. I know, incredible it's job. Amazing, I mean, they do get a little bit fed up because you're always constantly going, no, that wasn't quite like that, messing mm. up a bit. But thank God you are there because otherwise you'd have people like us sitting at home saying, do you know, I'm sure her party was on the other side. Cause well, we do it does like happen that, sometimes, we? for example, if you film the direct continuity of out inside first or outside first and then you find out it's raining and it didn't quite match yeah. up what you've subsequently filmed in story. Oh, I'm talking about makeup brows. Now Charlie, so. you're actually going to be taking part in the phone in as well, aren't you? Yes. Thank you very much. Any questions at all? 0990 100 <laughs> For now, thank you very much. Thank you.